The goal of this video is to show how to 3D print the entire Xbox controller case in wood PLA. To push the realism further, I added some wood patterns on the prints, which is clearly the challenging part of this project. It all relies on the slicer being able to apply texture on a 3D model. I was used to Cura, but I did not find this functionality. That is why I used ID Maker. A bit more complicated to use, but there are more options, including the possibility to apply pattern. All links are in the description of the video. I provided the links of the different parts of the Xbox controller needed to be printed. I found those models browsing on the internet. I struggled to find the back and front plate of the controller and did not find them again, so thanks for the anonymous provider of those models. The right shell is just a mirror of the left one. I modified the battery cover to accommodate for the rechargeable USB battery that I use instead of the classic AA batteries. I will demonstrate the flow I use to create texture on the battery cover. You can just apply it after on the other parts. First, import the STL. Then, add a custom texture. A texture can be any picture file. You can play on different settings to change its appearance. That is the part that takes quite a bit of tuning. The best technique is mostly to try different parameters to obtain the best slice part. For this part, I advise to keep the mapping type to cube. You can start slicing. You need to have previously configured ID Maker with your printer. In the advanced setting, in the special tab, you can change the texture XY offset, which is basically how much additional material the printer will add to the model. I used 1mm for all parts except for the front body where I used 0.5mm as 1mm was too thick. Once it has been sliced, you can see the results in the preview tab. The software only applies texture on the vertical face, so this needs to be taken into account when slicing the model. The bottom parts won't have any texture applied to it or very little. You can play with the different settings, but from experience, the wooden line of the pattern should be parallel to the print direction as it gives better results. It might not be obvious, but this line will look like a lot of tiny steps once printed. The issue with this method is that all parts have texture being applied to them, which is basically extruding from the original model, and thus all pieces that are supposed to snap together won't anymore. You have two choices here. Either add texture blockers to remove texture from specific parts of the model or to skip this step and spend more time on the actual 3D printed part. I will show how to apply the blockers. Here you can add a modifier that will cancel the effect of the applied texture inside its body. Then you can move it around so it blocks texture where you wish. The process is a bit tedious. Once sliced, you can see that the part inside the blocker doesn't have any texture being applied to it. You just have to add the blockers around all the parts you don't want to see texture being applied to. After, you need to generate supports. The auto supports are good enough. With ID Maker, you can always add or remove support manually, which is quite convenient. To personalize a bit the print, you can engrave the part with whatever text you want. Open the model with 3D Builder, a Microsoft app. Select the port and in the Edit tab, select Emboss. Add your custom text and save it. In ID Maker, you can reload the model to see the modification. I strongly suggest to do this step before adding texture blockers as it may move slightly the model in ID Maker. By adding a custom text first, you will avoid fine tuning the position of the blockers like I did.
After the addition of a few other texture blockers, this is what the final slice bar looks like. You can just repeat the same steps for all parts of the Xbox controller case. Here you want to block all parts of the model that must slide, clip or interact with other mechanical parts as well as old screw holes. Same for the front plate. Make sure the buttons have proper texture blockers and that the Xbox D-pad has a blocker as well. The front and back plates are pretend vertically for the pattern to be successfully applied. This is the result of the print. For printing, I use a Creality CR20. After printing, remove the supports and clean the different parts. The wooden PLA has a tendency to leave a lot of strings on the final print. Those need to be cleaned. A deburring tool is quite useful for the holes. I noticed that the wood PLA seems to be quite abrasive and tend to wear down the nozzle. That is why I suggest to replace the nozzle after this project if suddenly the print quality decreases. Sanding is quite efficient to remove the strings of PLA. The D-pad is a tricky bit as even with the blocker, it needs quite a bit of adjustment for the buttons to be able to push smoothly. To open the controller, you need to apply a bit of force to remove the shell covers. After, there are 5 screws to unscrew, 2 on each side behind the shell covers and 1 in the middle behind the sticker. You need a specific screwdriver to unscrew those 5. Once the screws are removed, you can check that all parts fit together. The top part needs a bit of adjustment on all the holes. There are still few steps left to give it a good look. I would advise to begin by reinforcing the weak parts. The parts with tiny holes are quite weak due to wood PLA which is quite fragile compared to classic PLA. For that, I use liquid glue. I had many broken pieces or failed prints during the process of making this controller. Many. After, you can apply plastic wood into the holes of the surface to smoothen the outside part. Make sure the plastic wood is filling the cracks and the surface is smooth after. The first layer of paint I apply was a water-based wood paint. This gives a brown wood-like uniform color to the part. I applied it with a brush. Make sure all the visible parts are painted. The second layer of paint is what really makes it look like wood, alcohol ink. I apply it with either a tissue or just my fingers. Alcohol inks evaporate super fast due to the alcohol in it. What we are looking in it is the gradient effect and giving to the wood different stains to give it some realism. The alcohol in it dissolves the previous ink layer and gives those nice color stains. You need to put everything back together. Do not screw too much or too little as the screws are being held by some wood PLA which is not the strongest material. The two shells should just clip. I replaced the AA batteries with a rechargeable USB battery, so I had to make some final adjustments for it to fit. Now you should have a nice wood-like Xbox controller. Cheers!